Welcome into episode number 122 of The Voice Behind the Voice. I'm Sean Aronson, the TV and radio broadcaster for the St. Saint Paul Saints, an independent minor league baseball team in the Twin Cities. Well, I am recording this on a Tuesday. Usually I record these on Monday, a full six days ahead of when I usually do. As you know by now, road trips being what they are, but Monday is an off day, and I try to stay away from the ballpark if I can. And as a matter of fact, the Monday off day is in between a 10-game road trip. So I figured we were in Kansas City for four days. It went great, by the way, or so I think. And then an off day, then we're off to Sioux City and Gary. So I figured I'd record this. Uh, well before uh, we left for Kansas City, and then Wednesday here is an afternoon game. So this was the best time to do it. You know, I was at a, a, a wedding recently, and I, I'm sure other broadcasters have had this happen before, and I'm not talking major league guys because they probably have this happen all the time, but broadcasters at the minor league level, and you get to talking to people, and everyone always asks, hey, what do you do? And, and I say, well, I work for the St. Saint Paul Saints. And that's always what I say. I never say specifically what I do. And then the follow-up question to that always is, well, what do you do? And I say, I'm the TV and radio broadcaster for the Saints. Now, the conversation usually goes one of three ways. One is people are not impressed with what you do. Okay, There are people out there that they just they, they don't care. It's not a big deal. Whatever. Fine. Number two, people think you are the public address announcer at the ballpark. They think you are the one that says, now batting number 22. And so over the course of time, I used to say I was the broadcaster for said team. Now I try to specify it by saying I'm the TV and radio broadcaster for the Saints, but still people don't quite get it. They don't quite understand. So it could take that. Or the third avenue that it could take, people are extremely impressed. And at this wedding I was at, folks were were pretty impressed. And they said, uh, so, so you're like the the Paul Allen of the St. Saint Paul Saints. Paul Allen does the Minnesota Vikings out here, for those of you that don't know, was a guest on this podcast. And uh, I said, yeah, if you want to look at it that way, that's, that's fine, not a problem. So later on, so wedding, whatever, then went to the reception later on, and I was introduced to the, these two guys that I had met at the wedding. Their wives were in the wedding. And I was introduced to their wives, and their wives said, uh, wow, you're, you're the broadcaster. And I, I was like, yeah. And they're like, these guys can't stop talking about you. And you're like the local celebrity here. And I was like, please do not say that to me because all that's going to do is inflate my already large ego and nobody needs that around here. But it was, it was interesting to see how, again, that side reacts where people think, Honestly, you're, you're a much bigger deal than you are because I, I really, I'm not, especially in this area at all. Nobody knows who I am. Uh, I barely know who I am. Uh, the people I work with barely know who I am. But it was just interesting because it always takes three different avenues, and it just happened to take that one at this, uh, at this wedding that I was at. With that in mind, let's get to episode number 122. It is Mike Kennedy of Wichita State. Uh, we were down in Wichita uh, few weeks ago now, maybe about a month ago, and uh, reached out to him, and he, he was more than happy. Not only that, he was more than happy to come to the hotel where we were staying at. Uh, I do all these interviews, and I usually go to uh, wherever these broadcasters are at, and usually 95% of the time it's here in Minnesota, and we go to, I go to these hotels they're staying at, which are very, very nice hotels. I mean, they're four-star hotels, maybe five-star hotels, but they're nice hotels, uh, Mike Kennedy was kind enough to come to the hotel we, we stayed at in Wichita, and I'm not trying to knock the hotel that we stayed at in Wichita. It was, very, it was fine, but it's like a two-star hotel, and we literally sat in the breakfast area, uh, you know, where they have the, the, the free breakfast, the free continental breakfast that you can get. Uh, we did it there uh, in the uh, late morning, early afternoon. He was great. He's, he's a Wichita State guy through and through. He was born and raised in the area, got the job with Wichita State. He's been there forever. Uh, and he also tells a, a great story. Everyone, had, I'm sure a lot of people have seen, seen uh, the, the Marshall movie, We Are Marshall, I think, is it, with the plane crash and all that. What maybe a lot of people don't know is a month or two before that Marshall plane crash, the same thing happened to Wichita State. 
and he was a student at Wichita State uh, working in the, the school newsroom when this happened and fielded calls from, from national media folks around the country trying to get uh, information and, and answers about this plane crash. It's, it's really fascinating uh, discussion and, and talk about that because, again, everybody knows about the Marshall plane crash, but not many people know about the Wichita State one, and part of the reason why is there was a movie made about the Marshall one. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, you can do so on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. You can also follow us on social media, on Twitter, at The Voice BTV, Facebook, facebook.com backslash The Voice BTV. You can always email me, thevoicebtv at gmail.com. All right, let's get to it. Episode number 122 with Mike Kennedy of Wichita State. JW, roll the open. Because it kept changing. Originally, it was like everyone was killed. And then there was a report that, you know, quite a few were walking down the mountain. Then it turned out that it was just a handful that had actually survived the crash. And so there was a lot of confusion. Um, it was it was really difficult, really emotional. But you all, I guess it was also a really good learning experience in learning how to handle a difficult story and not saying too much, learning how to just give out the information you actually have. So I suppose in a lot of ways it was it was a good really early experience, but uh, I mean that's that's a day, that's something that any of us that, that were there experienced and have never forgotten. 